God. Can God do this? Can God do that? Will God see this? Will God approve of this? Can God satisfy us? It was a question of unbelief. A question of doubting God. He has done this. He has done that. Can he do this as well? The Lord is telling us this new year, there will be no foolish question. In your heart, in your mind, even in your thoughts, you will not question God in a foolish way. You just understand God is God. God is almighty. He is the most high. And he's the creator of the heavens and the earth. And with our God, all things are possible. And there is nothing too hard for the Lord. Look at verse 22. In verse 22, because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. That was the wilderness life. They believed not in God. A little problem that came upon them, they'll be questioning. The faith, you know, that there's nothing too hard for God. All that they did each manifest. Wilderness life is a life of unbelief. But this year is going to be a life of faith. A life of holding on to the promises of God because we know God changes not. And because God does not change what he has promised he is able to do. And this year, we're going to follow God, believing in Jesus' name. We're looking at verse 35, and they remembered that God was their rock. And the high God, their redeemer, nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth. And they lied unto him with their tongues, and their heart was not right with him. Neither were they steadfast in his covenant. They were not steadfast in his covenant. And they didn't follow the Lord the way they ought to follow the Lord. Verse 40, how ought did they provoke him in the wilderness? It's still talking about their attitude, their lifestyle, and the results of their actions in the wilderness. I said they provoked the Lord in the wilderness in verse 40, and they grieved him in the desert. Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They limited God. And how do you know somebody limiting God? The prayer is, you know, the same five sentences they always utter. That's all. They, they never move forward in their prayer. They never go to the height and the depths and the length and the breadth of the riches of God in Christ. And they're always limited to this and that. And that's the wilderness life. And then it tells us in verse 42, they remembered not his hands. Wilderness life is a life of forgetfulness, not remembering what God has done. The great manifestation of his power, the great provision for the needs of the people, and the satisfaction that the Almighty God had given, for spirits had given, for the spirit, for the soul, and for the body, for the family, and for the whole of the nation of Israel. They forgot his works. They remembered not his hands. No, the day when he delivered them from the enemy. That's the reason why they were always panicking, always panicking. In fact, the wilderness life is such a dreary life, a dangerous life, a terrible life. None of us should ever remain in that wilderness. And you will not remain there. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 15. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 16, who led thee through the great and terrible wilderness. Through the great and terrible wilderness. That's telling us that if somebody is living a wilderness life of murmuring, of grumbling, of complaining, of provoking the Lord, of getting angry, of fighting, of sinning, of limiting the Lord, a life of wilderness, it says that is terrible great and terrible wilderness wherein there were fiery serpents you see it's in the wilderness that those serpents are able to stink people 
and in the wilderness those demons and evil powers and they run rampant uncontrollable in the wilderness that's the reason why if we're going to escape all those fairy serpents and all those demonic attacks and afflictions the lord is saying leave the wilderness behind and come over unto the land of promise and then it says in number 15 and scorpions and drought where there was no water who brought thee forth water out of the rock of lead who led thee in the wilderness with who fed thee in the wilderness with manna which thy fathers knew not that he might humble thee that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end that latter end has come it's going to do every one of us good in jesus name by the way uh, what were they doing that the lord was saying hey, this is not right and and then he recognized that and he said this is wilderness and when you get to the land of canaan and you cross over your life must not be like it was in the wilderness where you were deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 8 and verse 9 deuteronomy chapter 12 i'm reading verses 8 and 9 in verse 8, ye shall not do after all the things that she do here this day. They were still in the wilderness. And the Lord said, you know, as we look at the summary of your life in the wilderness, as we look at the conclusion of everything and the result, the evaluation of your life in this wilderness, the unstable life, the unbelieving attitude, the sinning, the yielding to temptation, the murmuring, the grumbling, the complaining, and the speaking against the Lord, and the forgetfulness of the covenant of the Lord, the forgetfulness of the works of the Lord. As we look at everything together, the Lord said, this is not my plan for you, and this is not my goal for you. And this is not my ultimate for you. All that you do here now, but say, you shall not do after all the things that you do here this day. Every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. That's wilderness life. Every man doing whatever is right in his own eyes. Every man saying whatever he feels is right with his own mouth. Every man going the way he wants with his legs because he feels that is right. Every man just behaving in a lawless way. As if there were no rule, there were no commandment, there was not a, there were not a God in heaven that controls and directs. And he says, the evidence that was still in the wilderness is that every man is doing as he feels he wants to do. In verse 9, for ye are not yet come unto the rest, that is unto the peaceful abode of the land of promise. It says, the reason why you're living like that, and why you're demonstrating that wilderness attitude and action and disposition and behavior and characteristic is because you have not yet come unto the rest and to the inheritance which the Lord your God giveth you. But thank God we're going to move on. In uh, Jeremiah chapter 48, Jeremiah chapter 48, I'm reading verse 6. Let's see what the Lord is telling us. And let's see what the new year proposal, proposition, principle, the new year command the Lord is giving us. He tells us in this uh, Jeremiah chapter 48. Jeremiah chapter 48, verse 6. Flee, save your lives, and be like the earth in the wilderness. It says, flee, save your lives. Look at all that the wilderness has brought. Look at the destruction. Look at the dryness. Look at the weariness. And look at the insufficiency. Look at the suffering. Look at the danger. 
And look at all the days of the people that have died in the wilderness. Now you understand why you need to leave the wilderness behind. Flee and save your lives and be like the hares in the wilderness. When you say hares in the wilderness, what does that mean? Jeremiah tells us in Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 6. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 6. For you shall be like the hares in the desert and shall not see when good cometh. Do you see what the Lord is telling us to flee from the wilderness life? is because those in the wilderness, they, they do not see when the good is coming. When the promise of God is about to be fulfilled. And when the promises of God of a yes and amen in their lives, they do not understand. They do not even think about it. And therefore it comes and goes and it means everything the Lord had for them. And then it says, I shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in the wilderness, in the salt land and not inhabited. It says the wilderness is not a place where rest. It's not a place where dwelling. It's not a place where say, I'm going to make this my permanent abode. That's why Jeremiah, led by the Lord and inspired by the Lord and influenced by the Lord, he said, flee and save your lives and come out of that wilderness. Then it says in verse 7, blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters. You want to say amen to that? Yeah. And I spreadeth out her roots by the river. I shall not see when heat cometh. But her leaves shall be green. I shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. It says when you move out of that wilderness... And then you come to the land of promise, the land of Canaan. It says you'll be so blessed, you'll not even know there is any uh, problem outside there. The Lord will do it for us. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 2. Jeremiah chapter 2. The reason why God had controversy over the children of Israel. They became so used to the wilderness life. That even though a new year might come, and the Lord was making a new promise unto them, they never thought about that new thing the Lord wanted to do for them. They were so used to the wilderness. I pray none of us will be used to the wilderness life in Jesus' name. In Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 6, Neither said they, Where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt? that led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and pits. The wilderness, a land of desert, a land of, of, uh, of pits. There are pitfalls. It's easy to fall in the wilderness. Easy to make mistakes in the wilderness. Easy to be crushed and conquered in the wilderness. Easy to be discouraged and despondent and depressed. In the wilderness, but when you come out of the wilderness, then all the desert life and the despondency and the discouragement and the despair and the depression, everything will vanish away in Jesus' name. And it says through a land of drought and of a shadow of death and through a land that no man passes through and where no man dwells. The wilderness life is not something that should be permanent in any life. It says, it's a place where no man dwells in. I will not live in the wilderness. That's why we're told in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Reading there from verse 5. As the apostle recounts the life of the children of Israel once again for us in the wilderness. And he's saying, we who are New Testament believers, and we who have Jesus Christ as our Lord, Savior, and Redeemer, and we have come into the new covenant with the Lord, if there is anything we need to do, is to very quickly hurry up and get out of that wilderness life and leave the wilderness behind for Canaan land. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. But with many of them, God 
was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. The wilderness is a place for defeat. And those who live that wilderness life, the Lord is not well pleased. And do you know that God actually didn't want them to stay in the wilderness for 40 years? He wanted them just to pass through very quickly. A year or two, they should have gone over. And then they went to search the land of Canaan. And then they came back. As they came back, you know the story. How those ten spies said, yes, we've gone to that land. It's a land that is flowing with milk and honey. But the giants are there. And the walls of the cities, they are walled unto heaven. They exaggerated actually. And then they said the land is eating of the people there. When we saw them, we were like grasshoppers in their sight. And they said, we cannot go in. They said they cannot, but I can. I can. I said I can. I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. That Christ is strengthening you. You'll move to the land of Canaan this year in Jesus' name. The Lord was not well pleased with them. Because of that, they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now, these things happened unto them. Why are white samples? To the intent, we should not lost after evil things, as they also lost it. Lost him. Having inordinate desire. Unchecked desires. Unscriptural desires. That's wilderness life. And he's saying that we should not lost after those evil things like they did. In verse 7, neither be idolaters as some of them as it is written. The people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. It says all the kind of worldly parties and worldly idolatry and all those things, we should leave that behind. That belongs to the wilderness in verse 8. Neither let us commit fornication. Neither let us commit fornication. That's what they did in the wilderness. As some of them committed. And they fell in one day three and twenty thousand. In verse 9, neither let us tempt Christ. As some of them also tempted, and they were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye. Can we say that together? Neither murmur ye. You didn't say that. Are you planning to murmur this new year? You know, all the time grumbling, grumbling, grumbling. I'm not happy with this. I'm not. What are you happy with? Every time I hear, I'm not happy with this. I'm not happy with it. Tell me one thing you're happy with. Instead of saying, I'm not, I'm not, say, I am, I am. I'm happy with this, I'm happy with this, I'm happy with this. Let's stop that complaining and grumbling and murmuring this year, and it will be a great year of blessing in Jesus' name. And you know, if your family, husband and wife, you're always murmuring against something, against something. You're always talking about negative about something. And the life in the family is a negative life. Negative attitude between the parents and children. Always more money. This one and this one and that one. Let's stop all that this year. This year is a new year. I said it's a new year. And it's going to be a glorious and wonderful year in Jesus' name. By the way, when somebody has been murmuring in the private, when he comes in the public, he's lost a smile. You know, murmuring takes away your joy, your happiness, and your smile. It takes away even your beauty. A person that was beautiful and handsome before, if the person has been murmuring in the private, in the room, when he comes out of the room, you can tell on the face, this one has been murmuring. Don't look at anybody now. But you know, when, you, when you've been happy at home, and when you have been joyous at home, I will say, I'm praising God. I thank God for this. I thank God for this. A thankful soul is a happy soul. That the person then comes out, you will tell this man, this woman, he's been praising the Lord in the private. That's why when he comes out, his action is praiseworthy. His action is full of thanksgiving. His action is saying, I thank God I'm alive. I thank God I have all these believers around me. I thank God I belong to such a church like this. I thank God for all the blessings that I have. Count your blessings and see what the Lord has done. When you've been counting your blessings, 
privately when you come out in the public you'll appear a happy person a joyous person a fulfilled man a fulfilled woman but if you are grumbling and murmuring and complaining you'll be a disgruntled personality when you come out we're going to be happy Memorying of the wilderness that is going to leave us totally completely this year in Jesus name and then it says neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer now all these things happen unto them for example and they are reaching for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come by the grace of God is going to be a new year I come to point number two, living by the word, believing the Lord. Now, what made the year new for them? What made the experience new for them? It's because they decided they were going to live by the word of the Lord in the new year. Let's come back to this, um, uh, to this Joshua chapter 5.